Good morning. This is an interesting lesson that will be a little bit challenging for some of you. A uh, little scientific in nature, it'll feel like. But um, what we're talking about today is linear and angular velocity. Okay. And we're going to start by addressing the angular speed, and then we're going to use that to find the linear speed. So we're going to do a little bit backwards of what the worksheet feels like. I just think if we do it all at once, it's easier. Okay. So anything that's turning really has two speeds. It has the speed at which the angle is rotating, okay? And it has the speed at which a uh, point on the outside is turning in like distance per time. All right, so angular velocity will often be introduced to us as like revolutions per minute, but we have to change it so that it's radians. So an angular speed is going to use this omega variable, looks like a W, and it is radians per time. So it can be radians per second, radians per minute, etc. But if it's given as revolutions, we're going to have to multiply by 2 pi because every revolution is 2 pi radians. All right, a linear speed is a funny V, and the linear speed is a distance per time, which they will write as arc length per time. It's some kind of distance, okay? So, I have another relationship, and this is, I think, on the next page in your notes, because rather than concentrate on this and then introduce a new one, I'm going to talk about this. So, we just said that linear speed is arc length per time. But arc length, remember, is r times theta. Okay, so we substituted that in. And now we just on the last page said radians per time is really the same as angular velocity. So if we have this radius times the angular velocity, we'll get the linear velocity. All right, so if we can find the angular speed first, all we have to do is multiply that angular speed times the radius to get the linear speed. That's the way I'm going to teach it. All right, so we're going to back up to this section in your notes, and we're going to start with number two, actually, over here. It says a bicycle tire with a radius of 14 inches. Sometimes they give us the diameter and we have to cut it in half. Rotates at a rate of 125 revolutions per minute. Okay, RPMs, revolutions per minute. So 125 revolutions every minute. But that's not an angular speed until we change it to radians. There's a little reminder over here that every revolution or rotation is 2 pi times the radius or just 2 pi radians. So we're going to use our dimensional analysis here. We want to get rid of revolutions, so we're going to write one revolution is 2 pi radians. Remember, you really don't have to write the word radians. It's understood. These divide out, and we get 250 pi radians per minute. And I'm just going to leave that. If you want to change it to a decimal, you can. But we are going to use that. By the way, that's our angular velocity. And we're going to use that over here to find the linear speed. So once we have that the angular speed is 250 pi radians per minute, linear speed is just radius times angular. So to find the linear speed, we're going to do the radius of 14 inches 
times 250 pi radians per minute. Now, if you recall, I've said several times that radians are magical units that just disappear. So when we multiply inches times radians, we just get inches per minute. Now, we are going to have to do a bunch of dimensional analysis on these, but not here. This one says we can leave it in inches per minute. So it's 14 times 250 pi, which is 10,996. I'm just going to round to inches per minute. Okay. And it, I didn't give a decimal over here, but you certainly could. All right. So for three and four, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start over here with number four. And we'll read the question first, though. It says, a CD with a diameter of 120 millimeters, so right away I'm going to write down that means the radius is 60 millimeters, rotates at a rate of 45 revolutions per minute. So it's turning 45 revolutions every minute, but we need it to be in radians, so we just put radian, uh, revolutions on the bottom so that it will divide out, and every revolution is 2 pi radians. So we multiply straight across and we get 90 pi radians per minute. Now we could multiply that into our calculator, but we're going to just use it over here, so I'm going to leave it. So right now we have that the angular speed is 90 pi radians per minute. And they want us to find the linear speed in millimeters per minute. All we have to do to find linear speed is multiply by the radius. So we would have 60 millimeters times 90 pi radians per minute. And type it in. And we get 16,965. And that was millimeters. Whoops. Okay, I didn't write that well at all. Per minute. And we just have to read and be careful that they don't ask us to convert it, but this said millimeters per minute. All right, so far so good, guys. I'm going to page down. All right, this time they're just asking for one thing. It says a 16 inch diameter tire. So I'm going to write right away that the radius is 8 inches on a car is making 500 revolutions per minute. As soon as I see revolutions, I know we got to change it to radians. One revolution is 2 pi. So if I multiply these, I get 1,000 pi. The radians went away. The revolutions divided out. I'm sorry, the radians didn't go away, so I have radians per minute. And leave that label if you want. And this is actually now, as soon as we have radians per time, we're at an angular velocity. They want the linear speed in miles per hour. Okay, so we're going to have to do some converting. First, I'm going to start with this formula. So I'm going to say I have 8 inches times 1,000 pi. Don't lose that pi in there radians per minute. Okay, now at dimensional analysis, this is where you have to figure out how to cancel these labels and convert. So I want minutes to become hours. So I want to get rid of minutes. Well, I know 60 minutes, which I need the minutes to be on top so that it will divide out. 60 minutes is one hour. So now minutes divides out and I'm left with hours. But I'm supposed to have miles, and right now I only have inches, okay? 
the radians label just goes away. We don't have to worry about that guy. But this 8 is on top, so I need inches on the bottom. Well, in my little brain, I know that 12 inches is 1 foot. And I can divide inches, okay, and get feet. Now, I really want miles, so the conversion you need to know is that 5,280 feet equals 1 mile. Sorry, I wrote that badly. So I need feet to cancel, so I'm going to put 5,280 feet is 1 mile. I need feet on the bottom so that this will divide out. And the label I'm left with are miles on the top, and the label on the bottom is hours. All right, so now we got to deal with all these numbers. So I have 8 times 1,000 pi times 60 times 1 times 1 all the way across the top there. But I have to be careful because in the denominator, I have both a 12 and a 5280. So I need to make sure both of those end up being divided. Okay, there's several ways you could type it. You could type 8 times 1,000 pi times 60, and then say divided by 12, and then after that, divided by 5280. Or you can put both of these in the denominator. You just have to be careful that you don't end up putting the 5280 in the numerator by multiplying it wrong. So, I'm just going to type all the way across the top, 8 times 1,000 pi, I'm not going to bother with parentheses up here, times 60, and then the two things in the denominator, I'm going to divide by the quantity, parentheses here, both the 12 and the 5280 are in the denominator. So I multiplied those together. You could multiply them ahead of time. I'm just trying to save myself typing and writing things down. So I got 23.8 miles per hour. Now I'm going to check my key. Yep, that's what I have. Just making sure I don't make a silly mistake somewhere. All right. So you're just going to take your time and do all the steps. Um, this one says a circular saw blade. The I'm sorry, diameter of 9 inches, so the radius would be 4.5 inches, rotates at 2,800 revolutions per minute. We cannot use revolutions per minute. We have to convert it to radians. So 1 revolution is 2 pi radians. Revolutions divide out. Multiplying across, we get 5,600 pi radians per minute. And that's actually our angular speed. So our linear speed is going to be the radius times the angular speed. 4.5 inches times 5,600 pi radians per minute. But we need radians per second. Oh, they want angular speed. Oh my goodness. Off power redirections. Do, 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 do. We don't need any of this. All we need is this number changed to radians per second. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm not going to redo the video, but it, it's a much easier question than it asks. Radians per second. So we have radians per minute, and every one minute is 60 seconds. I'm trying to get rid of minutes, change it to seconds. So I'm going to do 5,600 times pi, and then I'm going to divide by 60, and I'm going to be done. 5,600. I'm going to go ahead and type the pi in. Divided by 60 is 293.2. 
and the labels left were radians and seconds. All right, that's all that one wanted. My bad. Wanted an angular velocity. Read directions. Sorry. This one says a windmill has a blade that is 14 feet long. Okay. So a windmill would have like a blade here, blade here as it turns. But we're just going to talk about this radius as being 14 feet. Okay. I double checked what they wanted. Each blade here is 14 feet. So the radius is 14 feet. If the windmill is rotating, so roughly our angular velocity is 5 revolutions per second, but we need it in radians, of course. So every revolution is 2 pi. Radians. Revolutions divide out. 5 times 2 pi would be 10 pi. You can change that to a decimal if you want. Radians per second. And then we need the linear speed, if I read in miles per hour. Okay, so we got some converting to do. But first of all, linear speed is radius times angular speed. So I have 14 feet times 10 pi radians per second. I need to change seconds to hours and feet to miles. Doesn't matter which one you do first. As multiplying, you can do in any order you want. I think I'm going to take care of time first. Now, you could say 60 seconds equal an hour, or sorry, 60 seconds equals a minute, and 60 minutes equals an hour. But most of you know if you do 60 times 60, there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. So I'm going to use that one to do this all at once. 3,600 seconds is one hour. So now my seconds label cancels, and I'm left with feet. Radians cancel. Feet an hour. I want miles an hour. And remember the one we talked about a minute ago, 5,280 feet in one mile. So the feet are on the top, so I need the feet on the bottom over here so that they divide out in one hour in the numerator. Feet, feet. So the only labels I'm left, whoa, 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 whoa. Off power, off power, what are you doing here? Feet, 5,280 feet is one mile, not an hour. Goodness. So now my labels left are miles on the top and hours on the bottom, so we're good. All the way across the top, I'm going to be putting in 14 times 10 pi times 3,600. And the only thing I wound up on the bottom was 1 times 5,280. So I'm going to put that in and see what I get. Whoops. 14 times 10 pi times 3600 divided by 5280. And I got, I'm going to go with 300. And it would be 300 miles per hour. Because that's what was left up here, miles and hours. Or you could just write miles per hour. That's fine. Um, let me double check that that matches everything. Yeah, I'm good. All right, there are two more questions on the notes. I'm actually going to stop the video and put them in the notes, the slides that I post. I would like you to try on your own eight and nine, and then check the answers on the notes, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make this only a 20-minute video. Ciao, guys.